Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Rakeen jumps down some random UI rabbit hole and hopefully comes up with something useful. Recently my obsession has been animated squiggly lines and how to draw them with Android and Compose UI. I've gone through a couple different techniques on how to do so and I want to share what I've learned. Before we dive in, I want to give a little bit of background on how I got here. It all started with this tweet right here by Sina Samaki. They built a squiggly slider component that seemed like a perfect fit for the personal hydration app that I'm building called HydroHomie. Now, Sina Samaki was gracious enough to share the code. So I did what any good developer would do, and I built this component out myself using the code provided as a guide and a learning resource. And I'm pretty happy with the result. So after I copy... <clears throat> So after I built the squiggly slider component for HydroHomie, I was pretty content. And I thought to myself, I could be done with drawing squiggly lines. That didn't last very long though, because my guy, the legend himself, Sakit, dropped this banger blog post on how to draw animated squiggly underlines for text. And the interesting part here was that he used an approach that was completely different than the approach that Sina Samaki used. This post sparked some discussion on other approaches to achieving this effect. And we had another legend enter the arena. Roman Guy, our resident Android graphics expert, talked about an approach that was even more performant, where you just draw a straight line and stamp a wave path on it using path effect, whatever that means. And he mentioned that he talked about it in his DroidCon SF talk uh, for 2022. So I went ahead and watched that talk and learned even more ways to draw wavy lines. At this point, I'm filled to the brim with all of this knowledge, all of this power really on drawing wavy UI. And I want to wield it responsibly. I want to do something with it. I want to build something with it. And so I thought, why don't we just bring this full circle and let's rebuild that squiggly slider component using some of these new techniques and share it with the world. So that's what we'll do. The agenda here is simple. We're gonna look at three different approaches to drawing animated squiggly lines. Then we're just gonna rebuild that slider component using one of those techniques. As far as tools go, we're just gonna be using Canvas and Path APIs. We'll use Compose's gesture detection and animations and we'll use some good old trigonometry. So let's get into it. I've gone ahead and wrote the code for each of these solutions. So let's break them down and understand how they work. Now, as we start to look at the code, I just wanna call out that there will be a couple of things that will be common amongst all the solutions here. Namely, we'll be using Canvas to draw a path. We'll set up some parameters for the wave like wavelength, which is the size of the wave, amplitude, which is the height of the wave, uh, and we'll set the Y origin to be the center uh, and not the top, which it normally is. Now jumping straight into the meat of the solution, we can see where the path is being created, which is right here. And if we look at the code, it looks a little bit gnarly, uh, but in reality, the important part is right here. We're creating a wave shape by using two Bezier curves, using four distinct sets of points. And then we're just repeating that over and over and over again to create the wave. Now to illustrate this, let's just draw one uh, and see what that looks like. So I'm just gonna change a few things. I'm going to get rid of this while statement and just make it a repeat. I'm gonna repeat it once. And hopefully, yeah. So that just draws one of the wave shapes that we're uh, creating here. And the way that we're doing this is we're essentially taking the wavelength and we're splitting it up into four segments. So I created this segment variable, which is just that wavelength divided by four. Uh, and then we are setting the X points to be the different X points along that wave. Uh, and then we're just alternating the Y to either be the center or the top part of the first wave or the bottom part of the second wave. Um, that's essentially it in order to draw this wave. And then if I just revert this back, we are essentially just repeating that over and over again to create this wavy path. 
and uh, we keep some variable to track how far along the path we are as we're adding the new uh, as we're adding the new wave, and that's essentially it. And uh, the step function or the step variable that I just altered, if I change this back, this is actually what we're using to help translate the wave and uh, get that animation to play. So if we look at how this is being driven, we actually have this wave animation right here, which is just a infinite transition from negative one to zero. And so what's actually happening is this wave is uh, extending the bounds. I'm actually starting the drawing before the actual boundary that the wave is being rendered in. And I'm just going to translate that by one wavelength. And so uh, essentially it gets that point and it just keeps repeating itself. So it looks like a continuous wave animation, but it's all illusions. So we're creating the path, we're animating it, and let's just see where we're drawing the path right here. So we draw it using this draw path function. We pass in the path, we set the style to stroke so that it draws a line and we draw it within a clip rect so that it cuts out everything that's drawn outside the boundaries. And one other thing I did just to illustrate uh, how the path was being drawn is I added a way to show the points that we're actually drawing to create the path. So let's just set this to true and that should show all of the points. If we look at point one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, we can kind of see how the points are being used to draw the path. Moving right along to this next solution by Socket, we are just going back to math class and drawing a sine wave. So here I have this general form of a sine function, which will give us the y point given the x point and a couple of different parameters. Uh, those parameters are the amplitude, the stretch, which is just two pi divided by the wavelength, the phase shift, which is the x shift, and the vertical shift, which is the y shift. Now, a lot of those things uh, we can determine ahead of time. We can decide what we want the wavelength to be, what we want the amplitude to be. Um, the y shift is just going to be the center y point of the canvas and the stretch is just dependent on the wavelength and we're going to use the x shift to actually animate the wave we're just going to interpolate this wave value which just goes from zero to one and we're going to multiply that by two pi and so with all this in place we can just write out this function that will just give us the y value uh, given the x value by running that general form of the sine function with all of those parameters Similar to the previous solution, we are gonna break each wave into segments. Uh, but in this case, I'm actually gonna break it up into even more segments because we are drawing um, the points along the actual curve and we're connecting them to make the curve. Uh, really quickly, I can illustrate this by just showing the points similarly like I did in the previous example. So if I show the points, we can actually see that instead of having like points that we're using to control a Bezier curve, uh, I'm drawing all the points and connecting them to actually create the curve. Uh, so that's why I'm breaking it up into segments. If I change that, uh, and let's say, I don't know, I've changed this back into four, uh, we get something that is, has a little bit less resolution. And so 10 seems to work pretty well, so we'll keep it like that. So now if we just dive down into how we are creating that path, we are essentially just looping through all of the segments and we are computing the y using that sine function and the current x value. Uh, and then we are just incrementing that x value uh, to the next segment. And if we're at the first point, we just move to that point. Otherwise, we draw a line to the next computed point. Then all that's left to do is to actually draw the path. So similarly, we just send that path into the draw path function and we can set the color and the style as we want. Uh, one thing I do want to call out here is that we set the stroke cap uh, to round uh, and I kind of gloss over the fact that I added a little bit of padding to the wave that we're drawing here. Um, and so you can actually see the ends of the wave that's animating. 
that's actually the unique effect here with this approach is that instead of actually translating the wave to animate it, we are just animating a variable, namely the X shift that we're passing into the sine function. So we're actually just updating the Y position of each of these points to animate the wave rather than shifting the wave across the X axis. Last, but definitely not least, is the solution suggested by Roman, which is to use a path effect and a wave path and stamping that wave path along a line and animating it by just animating the phase of that path effect. Funnily enough, we've kind of already gone over the solution as it's exactly the same as the first one that we covered. It's just being a little bit more clever with the API choices so that we don't have to build the wave manually. Let me illustrate how this works. So if we go all the way down, we can see that the way that we're drawing this wave is we are drawing a line and then we're using what's called a path effect. And the path effect type that we're using is the stamped path effect. What this allows us to do is it allows us to provide our own path so we can provide a wave shape and it's gonna draw that shape over and over and over again along that line. Now, in order to draw the wave, we're essentially using the same exact logic that we did in the first solution. The only difference here is that we're using the relative version of the Bezier functions. Uh, this allows us to provide offsets rather than exact points, which will be helpful when it's used as a path effect as that, as we're no longer determining the points at which it starts, uh, that's gonna be determined by the path effect. We can quickly see what that wave path we're using as the stamp looks like. So what I'm gonna do is I am just going to comment out this drawing code right here. I'm going to uncomment out this one right here. And I'm just gonna quickly add a little command here. And then we can see the wave path that we are stamping along the line. Um, and that's not entirely true. We're actually using the stamp path here. This is just the output path that we're actually gonna use. Uh, after we apply some paint styles to the path. So we're using a paint object to uh, determine what the style of the path is going to be. And then we're using this get fill path function and supplying that wave path uh, as the input. And we have the output as the stamp path, uh, which, was, which is what we're actually drawing. If we actually just supply the original wave path, we can't actually update the style of that path directly so we need to use the paint APIs to do so. The way that we're driving the animation of this path is essentially the same as the first solution with one key difference. Instead of translating the points to drive the animation, we're actually updating the phase of the path effect. This has a similar effect, but we're not recreating the path on every animation frame. So this should be a more performance solution. We're now equipped with essentially everything we need to know about drawing squiggly lines and animating them. To demonstrate how this could be used in an interesting UI component, I have here the current goal slider in Hydro Homey. Let's rebuild the core slider component using sockets method. Uh, one, as an interesting exercise, and two, because with that method, we can draw the ends of the wave and round them off, which is more the aesthetic that I'm looking for. As you can see, I'm wearing a hat and it's tilted at the perfect angle. So that means it's time to build. So I made a new preview and copied over the squiggly line implementation. Now let's add all the components we need to draw to make this look more like a slider. And those are a line to show the remaining portion that hasn't been filled and a circular knob that we'll use to drag the slider. Let's go ahead and add those right now. So over here, I'm just gonna call draw line and give it a color, set it to dark gray for now. I'm gonna give it a start. I'm gonna give it an end. And I'm gonna give it a stroke width, 5F. And we should see a line up here, perfect. Then now I'm just gonna go out a circle. Same thing, color equals purple 80. And I'm gonna define the center 
as the center um, so I defined I created a circle and defined the center explicitly uh, because we're going to be updating that so now I have all the components let's just fix the drawing a little bit so in order to get the look we want so that things aren't just being drawn on top of each other, we're going to use clip recs. So I'm going to jump up here and add a clip rect. And I'm just going to put this in a clip rect. I'm going to specify the bounds. I'm going to say left equals 0f, right equals size dot width divided by 2. You can see it's starting to work. And we can do the same approach here. I'm going to create a clip rect, take all this, put it in a clip rect, and define left equals size out width divided by 2. So I, actually, I don't even have to specify the right. Just like that, we have something that looks a little bit more like a slider. And I'm just going to change this color to light gray because I like that color a little bit better. In order to make the slider draggable, let's add some state and use the pointer input modifier to detect gestures. So I'm going to quickly add this percent, which is going to be a remember mutable state of the current percent, which I'll set to 0f for now. And then I'm going to set up the pointer input um, modifier. And we're going to use this to detect gestures. Now, there are a lot of good higher level APIs that we can use, but I'm just going to do it slightly more manually just to fit my needs. So I'm going to do something called like for each gesture. And I'm going to call await pointer event scope. Um, this will just set us up so that we can now start detecting each uh, pointer event that happens. So I'm just going to set up this do while loop meet in event wait pointer event and then I'm going to get the x value from that event then I'm just going to force that into the range of the bounding box to float then what I'm going to do is I am going to update the state and I'm going to add the last portion so really quickly to describe how this works, uh, we're essentially just capturing all pointer events. So all touches and drags and whatnot. We're gonna update the X value depending on the last pointer event. And we're gonna keep doing this while we're touching it. As soon as it changes to uh, up, then it's gonna stop. We can now leverage this percent to update the slider. So going back down, to where we're drawing everything, we can now update the clip recs to be size dot width times d percent. And then similarly here. And for the circle, I'm actually just gonna make sure that the circle x uh, respects the padding and then I'm going to change the center x to be circle x. If everything re-renders, we can see that we now have a slider that we can drag. And we can even click on different portions. And it looks really, really good. And that's it for me. If you like this type of content, please subscribe as I have a ton of ideas lined up for this channel. And if there's any topic you'd like to see me cover, leave a comment and I'll add it to the queue. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.